Big, 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 oh big. Big and <laughs> What's going on guys this is gene jensen and in this video what i want to do is i want to show you guys how i figure it out how i pull all those puzzle pieces together and be able to find fish find them quickly and catch them let's get into it all right so i came up with this idea for this video and i think it'd be pretty cool for you guys just to kind of follow me along and me tell the story of my day but let me talk about how I figure fish out on lakes. I'm talking about any lakes, any lakes in the country. And I wanna go through that kind of step-by-step -step of how I do this. First thing I do is I'm always watching the weather where I'm fishing. I mean, for several days or even weeks prior to me going on a trip or prior to me going, find, going to a lake or whatever else, I've, or an area, I find, I watch the weather. I watch the wind. Um, coming in about you know four or five days before I'm watching the wind directions I'm watching the temperature I'm kind of guessing what the water temperature is I'm putting all those puzzles pieces together but you've got to become a weatherman you've got to be obsessed with the weather in the area that you're in or that you're fishing in and you got to pay attention to what's coming up colder temperatures at night will drop the water temperature warmer temperatures that are warmer than the water temperature will raise that that water temperature um, warm days wind wind direction is huge we've had a uh, east wind for the last five days down here in florida and so what i'm going to do is i'm heading to the only area of this lake and this is lake um i can't remember the name of this lake i'm on anyway it's the only area of this lake that has that's been that has an area or that's protected got big trees along this side right here the east wind's been blowing this way but there's a pocket right up here in this area in this lake where we're going that is protected and that's my first place why because that's where the water temperature is going to be the warmest it's early spring these bass are getting ready to to spawn and uh and so we're going to go out and go look for them that's another thing we want to pay attention to the seasonal patterns you know, right now we're in pre-spawn down in Florida, spawn. Uh, it's going to be that way up north here shortly as, you know, it's going to progress as we go further north. But these fish are wanting to move shallow. They've been out deep. They've been hunkered down in the grass all winter long. Um, you know, for, for you guys down up north, they've been down in ditches and things like that. And they're moving up and they want to move up to spawn. So you really got to pay attention to that. And that's kind of what I'm doing. Water temperatures right now is at that point where these fish are gonna move up and I'm gonna go and start a little bit shallow, probably a little deeper than I really want to just to double check and make sure and then I'm gonna move up shallow. As I'm heading to, to where I wanna fish, there's a few things that I always look for on my fish finder. I look at the temperature. I wanna see what the water temperature is out here on the main lake or wherever the boat ramp is. And I wanna compare water temperatures as I'm moving around. So I'm always watching that especially this time of the year. Uh, I'm looking to see whether there's a warming trend on one side of the lake and, you know, or, or what, what's going on. So I'm always comparing those, those water temperatures. And if you're like me and you're dyslexic with numbers, keep a note in your phone. Uh, I always do. And just pay attention to see what's going on, see, what, see what's, where the warm areas are. And that's kind of the stuff you're looking for. On man-made lakes and even on natural lakes, typically, that northwest corner of pockets, of bays, of creek channels, any bank that's on the northwest side that's protected with trees is going to warm up a little bit better. If it's shallow, it's going to warm up a little bit better. And if there's a little stain on the water, that stained water will warm up a little bit faster unless there's a clear water with a black bottom, but we're not even going to get, in, get into that. So it's kind of what we're looking for. Pay attention to your water temperature. All right, so another really, really important tip is is map study learn how to read a topo map learn how to read a fishing map um there's plenty of stuff out there to teach you i i probably need to make another video i haven't made one in many many years about how to do that but that is one of the most important things understanding contours understanding um how bass relate to contours and stuff like that is a great subject to get into the uh but I, the first thing is, is you gotta know how to read a topo map. You gotta understand what, what the contours are, what a hump is, what a point is, and things like that. Uh, to, and then it'll help you to narrow that kind of stuff down. So what I've done here is this lake has a huge point that sticks way out in the middle of the lake. And that point coming around to, a, uh, to, the, to the bank and running along these trees creates this huge pocket um, or, or a 
kind of a, an area that has been protected from the sun, from the wind uh, for, for the whole entire time the wind's been blowing. And so I, I fully expect that water temperature to be, right now we're at 67, I expect that water temperature to be two or three or maybe even four degrees warmer. Um, and and I, I expect the bass to be there, but if they're not, I'm just gonna keep moving around. The biggest key for me is move around until you see life, until you start seeing boils and swirls and little ticks and stuff like that. If you're in an area that you don't see any of that, get out, keep moving. And, uh, and you'll find fish faster if you don't stick around and stay where fish aren't, if that makes sense. Lures of choice to start with. Like I said, I'm gonna, run, I'm gonna move around the lake. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna stop and stay in one place for too long. Uh, and I'm looking for, for life, for, for things moving around, water moving, uh, fish following my bait, of course, bites and stuff like that. But my lures of choice are going to be pretty much moving baits. And down here in Florida, in any place where there's a lot of cover, I'm gonna throw a swim jig. Okay, this is a golden shiner colored swim jig. Uh, it's actually a six cents. Um, can't remember the name of their swim jigs, but uh, Divine, I think. But really, really good swim jig. I love it. Got a good stout hook and I fish it on braided line. I've got a uh, fish on a, a heavy, heavy fast or a heavy, yeah, heavy fast action rod is pretty good, 60 pound braid. Then the other one's gonna be a chatterbait. So what if I, if I don't have a lot of really super thick cover and I'm working edges of grass and stuff like that, I'm gonna throw a chatterbait and, uh, and just keep moving and keep moving. I got a frog tied on, I got a couple other things uh, for moving baits. And then once I, I get a strike or once I feel like I'm in an area that have bass, I'm gonna try to catch as many as I can on moving baits because they're fun. But typically, and what I should do is grab like a flipping bait or something and work the grass a little bit more thorough. Um, we'll see, we'll see what decisions I make with that. All right, so the first places I always like to start is I like to start on points. Down here in Florida, it's points of, of grass. It's where grass sticks out further or a, a patches of grass stick out further than all the other patches of grass. And what I've got right here in front of me is I've got a point of grass and I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna work my way back and I just kinda, like I said, gonna cover a lot of water really quickly, but I always try to start on points, whether you're on a grassy lake or on a lake that has points that are, you know, part of the, the topography of the lake. Um, but the first thing I do, I'm gonna be fishing less than about five feet of water. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna, gonna turn my fish finders off. Uh, where's my standby? There it is. Come on. Okay, and what that did is it does is it turns off your, your transducers and it quiets your boat down tremendously. And when you're in super shallow water, you don't really need your fish finder. You can see what you're throwing at. And so, um, so shut it off and it's less likely to spook, especially, especially fish that are in these, these uh, high pressured lakes. I mean, the parking lot is Thursday and the parking lot's full in this lake. So there's a lot of pressure. And so I'm just gonna sneak up to these points grab my swim jig work it through this grass really really good and see what happens and then move my move around until i figure something out all right so i pulled up into this area and and i started to see more life started to see splashes up in the grass along the edges i started started seeing a little bit more bait fish swimming around just life in general and it lets me know that the, the conditions are good to have fish there if you have bait fish you're going to have bass bass are lazy they don't want to go too far away from their food source right now they're thinking about spawning they're not going to go you know they're going to be around those shallow places that they'd like to spawn um and so always think about that what it, when you, if you find bait fish if you find little minnows if you find bugs if you see a lot of splashes and stuff it means that the water conditions are right to have life there and if life there it's pretty good chance there's going to be bass there can't stress enough the importance of being quiet in super shallow water. So much stuff spooks fish and especially in a kayak you can get so close to these fish and still get bit. One thing you guys will notice if you ever get a chance, those who don't fish out of a kayak, if you ever get a chance to fish out of a kayak, you spend a few days in one you'll notice that you're getting a lot more bites close to the boat that you don't typically do in bass boats. Now the reason I chose a swim jig for this is it's just because it comes through every type of cover really, really well. This uh, this semi grass right here, which is this brown grass, is not super um, 
because it's sticking up so high and swim jigs typically don't don't like it very much but at least i can work around the edges and kind of work through it and again i'm more looking for what's going on on the surface of the water and so i'm just going to kind of work it around and look and see i'm not trying to get i'm not so much concerned about i got to get a bite i got to get a bite i just want to figure something out there was a bite right there <laughs> say that and I get a bite huh all right so again i'm gonna slow down try to throw that spot again see what happens i like a pretty good bite too cool so pull up on a point get a bite my first cast second cast Well, that was easy. <laughs> and that's the results. <laughs> I was hoping it would be a little bit tougher than this so I could show you guys kind of what I, the method I go through. And I'm still going to do it. I'm still going to show you guys. But a nice little chunky male. Awesome. Let's keep fishing. So now, after making 30, 40, 50 casts in this area, working these edges, working around inside of them, stuff like that, I've got to determine whether those two fish lied to me. Uh, and that happens a lot it really does especially your first fish in the days you're trying to figure them out did that fish lie to me uh is it the only one in that area is it totally different and so i'm again i'm still looking for at for action i'm looking for life and if those are the only two fish in this whole entire hole i'm gonna keep moving until i start to see some serious serious life so key point don't let them lie to you. Whoa, I landed right on top of that one. I don't know how big it is. Oh, it's a big one. Yes. <laughs> Bam. Another one in the Kissimmee grass. He was right next to a little mat that was in that Kissimmee grass. But uh, it went a little shallower as I'm working my way along this point. And uh, I can't Let me just show you that son of a gun. Oh, he's a big one. Nice fish. So I feel like all the, the, the preparation, keeping an eye on the weather, keeping an eye on the trend, seeing what's going on, understanding the, uh, the, the seasonal patterns and that kind of stuff really does. And then time on the water is invaluable for this. This video can only go so far, but um, I feel like if I had not been paying attention to the wind direction and the temperatures and things like that, prior to coming out here none of this would ever happen but like i always say be sure to introduce somebody to fishing introduce them to my channel let me help you teach them how to fish more importantly get out on the water go out and catch some fish and have a great day we'll see you